welcome back to my channel um, if this is your first time joining me make sure that you do hit that subscribe button and if you like this video please do make sure to like it and leave some comments and questions if you have anything today I'm going to be talking about my hair um, things that I've learned along my journey I've been uh, natural for about five years I transitioned and I did a big chop after about a year and a half of transitioning and so I'll talk to you about some of the things that I've learned along the way number one is you've got to take the research that you find online whether it be those Instagrams that you saved those TikToks that you saved those playlists that you've created on YouTube to watch later take those learnings experiment with them and implement them into your hair routine Guys, this is probably the biggest hindrance that all of us experience. We save things, we procrastinate, we like, I'll get to it later, but we actually don't try. And then if you don't try, you'll never learn what actually works on your hair. So today I challenge you to go unpack one of those folders that you've created on your hair. Try one of them and be consistent with it for a while so that you understand whether it works for your hair or not. That is a very important step to understanding what works for your hair, what doesn't, things that you should be removing, products, all those kinds of things are so important on this journey if you're going to figure out what actually works. Because stuff that I say to you might work, but some stuff that you see on another person's channel might actually not work anymore. Um, and that's also something to note is that the journey is not linear, your hair evolves and changes, so you've got to switch it up and the research and the experimenting will help with that. So now, once you have gotten to the point where you've solidified a routine, stick to it. I know it's gonna sound a little bit contradictory, but experimenting is very important. However, don't experiment too much to the point where you don't have any consistency in your hair routine. As an example, I had been using the lock method for three years, and I decided, okay, I feel like my hair has reached a bit of a plateau let me switch it up so I tried the lock method I mean no I tried the lock method and I moved over to the LCO method that experiment had such a huge impact on my hair that I decided to stick to it so once you've experimented stick to a routine and don't veer too much you know so stick to a routine for a certain period of time until you feel like you've reached a uh, a plateau and then you can switch it up a bit further to that point don't experiment with your hair to the point where it's breaking so you're seeing all these amazing hairstyles on social media then you're going to like a styling frenzy you are detangling your hair a lot you're manipulating it a lot and you're causing unnecessary breakage so please be careful of that and um, so experiment but experiment to a point where it is still healthy for your hair and don't be going all crazy with experimenting to the point where like there's no consistency so very important so i used to be an advocate of shrinkage and i still am shrinkage is very very important for indicating whether your hair is in a good or healthy state however my hair tangles like crazy when my hair is shrunk okay um it is at the point where shrinkage is not doing the most for me which is why you'll note that i stretch my hair out regularly so whether i'm using twists or plaits um, i've also started experimenting a little bit more with heat i stretch my hair out um, and that stretching out will probably happen once a week so probably put my hair in twists once a week and um, i might keep the twists in for two or three days and then wear it out for the rest of the week but i found that has reduced my tangles single strand knots significantly especially now that my hair is at this particular length um, so i recommend if you feel like oh my hair is just getting very tangled for me try it out it also helps that if your hair doesn't get too tangled in one cycle it won't be very difficult to detangle on your next wash day so that for me I found is a great key to like reducing the stress that comes with the wash day so stretching my hair out um, and then by the time I get to wash day my hair is not 
hypertangled. So detangling is relatively easy and that detangling um, that is done safely and gently is not going to impact my hair's growth because I'm not snapping my ends off. Now let's talk tools, especially since we've just spoken about detangling. You've got to have the right tools for your hair. Seeing something that is made for a one hair type versus another hair type and trying to put it on your own hair might not necessarily work. Um, and I'm just going to put my key tools here in front of you guys. So number one, wide tooth comb. Your wide tooth comb. I don't really use um, a thin comb or thinnish comb anymore um, unless it's to make lines. And if I use an afro comb, it's just to pick out my hair to give it a bit of volume. But this is my go-to. And then the next thing after that is the um, detangling brush. However, before you go too far in 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 your in your um, detangling with sorry, my brushes, brush my brush been through. Before you go too far in your detangling with these tools, utilize your fingers. Okay. Your fingers help you feel where you've got tangles. You can gently untangle them. It's probably one of the safest ways to detangle your hair. And before I go to my, my comb and my brush, I start with my fingers first. The other one that is very, very, very important, guys, like we are not just trying to fog products onto you. Satin is so important in helping retain moisture in your hair helps preserve um, hairstyles as an example if you've done a twist out it helps extend the lifespan of your twist out it helps reduce your hair rubbing against each other and then interlocking it is so 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 key like I use satin when I'm on the couch when I'm in my room just for like everywhere everywhere anyway I was even thinking about my car I was like mm. My headrest I need to do something about my headrest satin is so influential in making my hair journey so much easier there are so many places you can get certain products you can either get from my online store you can buy them in clicks China Mall like there are options for days but if you're not sleeping with satin girl what are you doing hmm? <laughs> so those are my three key tools that you absolutely need to have. Um, three, two, yeah, sorry, two. So it's satin products and good detangling tools. If you don't have good detangling tools, you just use your fingers, but those are good places to start. You've got to nourish your hair. You've got to look after it by reintroducing some of the oils that it's lost, some of the nutrients it might have lost during wash day. And you do that through deep conditioning. Guys, I know that there are mixed reviews. So many people say this and that about deep conditioners. Personally, I use a deep conditioner every time I wash my hair. I found benefit in it. I mean, look at my hair. Um, and I swear by deep conditioners. Protein for when my hair is looking a bit dull and it's feeling a brittle. Moisture treatment when my hair is feeling dry. That is my rule of thumb. I highly recommend that. Um, there are different brands and products. If you want to make your deep conditioner in the kitchen, I mean, go for it. I personally am not a chemist. I'm not trying to do that. I buy my stuff off the shelf and my hair loves it. But there are like grassroots deep conditioners that you can use like mayonnaise, banana, honey, those kinds of things. But guys, whatever you're doing, just try to integrate deep conditioners if you aren't you will most likely see the benefit I have and many people that weren't doing it before are seeing the benefit of using it and using it regularly and consistently you've got to trim your hair regularly guys don't be afraid of them scissors girl I know myself I whenever I go to the salon especially when I used to relax my hair and they'd be like, oh, are you going to do a trim? And I'd be like, no, why would I want to trim? I want to lose all the length that I just got. But trimming is vital for your hair's health. One thing about your ends, they get frayed very easily. That can be because of styling. It can be because of the weather. But if your ends are frayed, 
what happens is it's a compounding effect so if the ends are a bit janky it starts working its way up the rest of your hair shaft um, and then if you are working the damage all the way up your hair shaft eventually it will start breaking off bit by bit then you'll notice that oh my hair is not growing and if you're feeling like your hair is not growing that might be the reason it might be that you are not tending to your ends well through trimming or you are over manipulating your hair and it's causing unnecessary breakage so pay attention to your ends trim them regularly you can either trim them yourself using hair shears you can get hair shears from um, clicks discam uh, my natural hair co rather get the proper shears if you're going to do them yourself don't use a scatter that's just lying around in the house because often enough those scissors are blunt um, and if they're blunt it damages your ends as well so get proper hair shears otherwise go to the salon um, I used to trim my hair a lot on my own but I became Edward hands, and my last trip to the salon where I did a trim I noted that I basically had such a disparity in the way I trimmed my hair uh, and I've decided that going forward it's likely that I am going to be doing more trims at the salon than by myself so decide whichever way you're gonna do it just make sure you do it the right way so this one um, I know will vary from person to person and it also it, it depends on the mood it depends on what you're going through but no matter what you need to wash your hair regularly and regularly is really dependent on you and when I say wash your hair regularly, I mean like using a shampoo, something that is going to lift the build up off your hair shaft, off your scalp, um, and allow your products to penetrate your hair shaft so you're getting the nutrients from all the things that you're using on your hair. Because what happens is we over um, extend the periods in which we wash our hair, or we are abusing co washers and we're not using proper shampoos to just give our hair a blank slate then your hair is like child I can't breathe um, then you'll note that your hair might start looking a little bit limp it's looking a little bit dull it's just not doing the vibes and it might be that you are not shampooing your hair regularly enough um, I know some people stretch their, their washes I personally wash my hair uh, once a week because I do stuff with my hair I like playing with play with playing with it yeah I, was, uh, I can't remember what my last point was but I know a lot of people stretch their washes um, I wash my hair once a week because I do play a lot with um, different products and I use butters on my hair and butters can cause product buildup so for that reason I wash my hair regularly I wash it once a week sometimes twice um twice sometimes every two weeks uh depending on what's going on busyness fatigue you know the drill i even wash my hair when it's in a protective style this is very important it really just helps you get the most out of a protective style if you are giving your hair a good rinse and a good wash down um when it's in a protective style so wash your hair regularly guys don't neglect the shampoo use a shampoo that is designed for your hair so don't be using some Caucasianality shampoo on your hair, chair. Get somebody with some coils, some, some shampoo that's made for coils and use that on your hair. My next tip is be gentle with your hair, especially when you're doing things like styling, detangling. That can make a huge difference in how you're retaining length and getting that growth that a lot of us want to achieve. Um, something that we often take for granted if you're in a rush and you're just pulling and you just want to take it out or if you are removing braids all those things can be detrimental to your hair retention rate um, and just the health of your hair in general so be gentle very be very gentle gentle very be very gentle with your hair when you're um, busy styling taking down washing it all those things can have a huge impact on the state of your hair. Okay. Next tip is something that often we neglect and that is 
what you're doing to your body, what you're feeding it, the state of your general health can have a huge impact on what's going on with your hair. So I learned that when I was losing hair, I learned it the hard way. I mean, I'd known it, but I learned it increasingly when I was going through a tough time mentally. I started losing hair and like last year in the front, yeah, it was very traumatic. Um, and I just decided that when I started losing my hair that I need to just reevaluate everything that's going on in my life. I just removed a few things, um, brought in a better routine, started eating more beneficially and more balanced to my health. More water. Actually, I'm going to have some water now. Ow! More water. Um, more water, exercising to increase your heart rate, to get the blood pumping. Those things are actually so beneficial to you here, guys. Um, it is understated, but it's so important. Um, especially if you have just given birth postpartum, you need to be making sure you're taking your um, antenatals, um, antenatal what? your vitamins you gotta be taking your vitamins the vitamins that they tell you to take when you're having a baby those ones take those vitamins um, and take them for the prescribed time um, as well as making sure that if you have any deficiencies like iron deficiencies all of those things that you're addressing them because that will also impact your hair growth rate um, and the state and health of your hair The last thing, which is probably for me the most important, comparison is a thief of joy. I'll say this in all videos like this. Stop looking at other people's hair and aspiring to have their hair. You need to aspire to have the best version of your hair. That means tracking how your hair looks from a health perspective, tracking your length retention, tracking um, the color of your hair, because even the color can be an indicator of whether your hair um, is health is decreasing or improving. Stop, don't look at me. My hair is not your hair. We do not have the same genetic makeup. We do not have the same quality air, food, all those things, like everything varies from a person to person basis and those have implications in how your hair shows up so make sure that you are striving to have the best version of your hair whatever that looks like it doesn't necessarily mean length it doesn't necessarily mean um the amount of styles that you're doing or the amount of styles that you can do just look at where you've come what you want set clear goals meet those goals but don't make those goals aligned to somebody else, a man or an influencer or unrealistic um, hair idols. Like don't, don't, don't do that. Stick to your lane, focus on your hair, do what's right for you and you will see the benefit. I know that because I've done so myself. Best thing that I've ever done for myself. Um, so yeah. Simplified, those are my 10, my 10 learnings from this uh, hair journey for the past five years. And I really hope that whilst you are embarking on the journey, whether you are relaxing or you are dreadlocking or whatever it may be, that you're learning, unlearning, appreciating, doing the things that make this journey so valuable and amazing and beautiful i've learned so much about myself on this hair journey and there's so much that you can learn about yourself as well your family history all these things you know just be cognizant of your journey and focus on you you know learn from others take what you need but don't make it negatively impact how you take this journey with that i want to say thank you for watching please do like, leave a comment, ask questions, anything down below. Um, and if you aren't following me on Instagram, 
hit your girl up and if you want any other videos related to hair, let me know in the comments what you're looking for.